Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and let's talk about what's next for the Fuji X100V. This is the fifth camera in the Fuji X100 line. There was the 100, then there was the S for second, the T for third, the F for fourth, and then the V for fifth. They had to switch over and go to Roman numerals uh, for the V because they couldn't say F twice, you know, four and five. Both have an F. So this came out in 2020, February of 2020. So it's been three years now since this camera was released. So you know that Fuji's got to be thinking about what's next on the horizon. What are we going to do next? I have not heard any rumors about anything that they're planning to do with this camera. So I was looking at some of the comments from my last video where I talked about who this camera is really for. And people are starting to say, well, what do you think they're going to do next, Bure? What, what do you think is going to be the next thing that they change on this camera? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I really want to get your feedback too, because I'm curious if you're an X100V owner, what would you change about this camera? What would you add? What would you get rid of? What have they done wrong? You know, what can they do better. Uh, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb and it's available anywhere that podcasts are found. I have a group on Facebook called Pro Photo Talk with Bure Perry. Join that group. It's a wonderful community. And follow me on Instagram because I post pictures there uh, from my professional work and, and so forth. And I also post just funny memes and stuff there. So <laughs> be sure and follow me on Instagram. You'll have, a, you'll have a good time there as well. So let's just break it down, right? Let's just talk you know, piece by piece on this camera. Uh, what areas do they usually make changes and what areas could they make changes? So let's start with the body. Uh, they added weather sealing uh, in the last iteration. This one is now weather sealed. Now you have to have a filter on the front in order for it to be weather sealed. And the reason is because the camera lens, the focusing mechanism goes in and out. So they can't really weather seal that. So you have to put a filter on front and that gives it a weather sealing. Um, so we don't need weather sealing. What about IBIS? What about in-body image stabilization? Would, would that be something that we would like to see in the Fuji X100V? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want it? I mean, there's nothing bad about having IBIS. The question becomes, uh, will they, could they do it without making the camera bigger? Can they do it without making the camera even more expensive? Because if it means making the camera bigger or making the camera more expensive, I'm not so sure I really want it right? Is IBIS that important? We're shooting with a wide lens to begin with. It's 35 millimeter equivalent. So, you know, camera shake, not usually that big of a deal. You know, if you're shooting with telephoto lenses, an IBIS is crucial. But with a camera that's this wide, do we really need IBIS? Are you willing to pay extra for IBIS? I don't think I am. I mean, it'd be nice, but I mean, I, I think a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about right now is going to be stuff that they, that they might put in the camera just because they have to put something in the camera. <laughs> to be honest, it's damn near perfect right now the way it is. But if you've got to improve it, well, I guess I guess you could have add some IBIS. Uh, um, by the way, I'm going to say this too. I would like to start a trend right now. One of the things that we do when we talk about camera lenses is we talk about their millimeter and then we talk about the equivalent millimeter. So this camera is an equivalent of a 35 millimeter lens, but it's actually a 23 millimeter lens. Am I right? See, I don't even I don't even know because I only think in terms of the equivalent size. What would that lens be on a full frame camera? It would be a 35 millimeter lens. So here's what I think we should do. I'm going to make another video about this where all I do is pitch this idea to the world. All right. And so it's, if it's already been, if someone's already done it, tell me in the comments. So millimeter, we write that as MM. So millimeter is one word. So I don't know why we write MM. We could just write M. So how about instead of saying millimeter, if we just start saying ME or EM for equivalent millimeter or millimeter equivalent. I think ME is good. So instead of saying, well, this camera has a 24 millimeter lens, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent, we could just say this camera has a 35 ME lens. Huh? Right? Am I genius? Did I just blow your mind? I think I did, because that's what we should start saying from now on. From now on, when we're talking about crop sensors, and APS-C, and, 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 and what do you call micro four-thirds, right? We'll just start saying, that's a 35 ME lens, instead of having to do the math in our heads. Not to mention, it's got to be confusing for new photographers who come in, 
trying to figure out, oh, wait, what? Wait a minute. I thought that was a 35 millimeter lens. Well, no, it's a, it's a 24 millimeter lens, but it's equivalent to a 35. Oh, no, no, no. Just call everything. That's a 35 ME. That's a 50 ME. That's a 24 to 70 ME. Right? Uh huh? All right, get on that. Spread the word. <laughs> All right. Next thing we got to talk about is the lens. Should we make improvements to the lens? Well, they made a pretty big improvement last time, right? Because you know the F, the lens, could be a little soft. Not so soft that you hated the camera. You still loved the camera. It was a great camera. But once they put this new lens on here, once they put the new glass on here, it got much sharper. And we really do like that. So what else could we do? What if it had a zoom? No. No. Blasphemy. <laughs> No, we can't have a zoom. I mean, yeah, would it be great if we had a 24 to 70 millimeter ME zoom on this camera? Sure, it, it would be, but then it would have to go in and out and, and this camera wouldn't be what this camera is. So no, not, not a zoom lens. What about if we gave it a detachable lens? We could take the lens off, we put other lenses on. No, because if we do that, we'd have to lose the leaf shutter unless Fuji was going to make a line of leaf shutter lenses just for this camera, that's way too expensive. I don't think they would ever do that. So we're not going to detach it, and we're not going to make it a zoom. It's just going to stay the way it is. But if I had to pick one thing for them to change about the lens on this camera, it would be this. Maybe we make it wider. 35 millimeters, that's like a standard for old school photographers, right? When you come up, you had a 35 millimeter lens on your camera. It's just kind of a standard lens that you would use a lot. And that's fine. But I think today, in today's market, especially with the rise of cell phones and their really wide angle lenses, I think 24 is a better lens. I think most people would be happier with 24. In fact, I have the attachment that goes on this camera and makes it a little bit wider. Takes it from 35 to like, what, 32 or 29 or something. I don't even know what it does. Um, <laughs> because it's an Emmy equivalent. Um, so yeah, I think that overall, I would like this lens better if it was wider. Even if you just took it to say 30, I think that, that even that would be a little bit better. Uh, but I would only like that if you could continue to use the same attachments on it that you bought for your other versions. So you wouldn't have to replace those. If that's not possible, then just keep this lens the way it is. All right, so that's body, that lens. Uh, what else can we talk about? What about what about video? Video capability in this camera, not that great. I, I don't know that I've ever even used the video in this camera, and people will tell you, yes, yeah, not a video camera, right? So, should we make the video better? No, I'm sorry. It's not a video camera. It's not supposed to be a video camera. It's not built to be a video camera. In fact, it, you can take the video completely out of this camera. I'll tell you what, take the video out and add IBIS and keep the price the same and I'll be over the moon, happy as can be. Take the video out and add a wider lens and I'll be perfectly happy. Great. You know, I, I, it's not a video camera. It's not meant to be a video camera. So let's stop trying to make it a video camera. This is a photographer's camera. So. I don't care what they do with the video because I'm probably never going to use it. Now, that being said, if they put some great new video into it, then maybe I will start using it and I'll be making a video about how to use the video on your Fuji X100V. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being hypocritical. I'm just saying right now I really don't need video in this camera. I have cameras for video and I have my cell phone for video as well. So what else? Sensor? Hmm. Well... The Fuji X-H2 and the X-T5 both have that new 40 megapixel sensor. And this has still got the old Fuji sensor, which is a great sensor, which is what, 24 meg, 26 meg? It's funny how much I don't have these things memorized for a guy who makes videos all the time. Uh, I'm going to go on a limb here and say, yeah, yeah. They have made the jump to this APS-C sensor that's a 40 megapixel sensor, and it is the most packed sensor, the highest megapixel sensor of any APS-C camera that you can buy. I think they should stick it in every single camera that they make. I've got it on the X-H2. I love it. Another thing about this camera is because you're shooting with a 35 ME lens, you're always shooting kind of wide right? And shooting even wider if you put the lens on here that I want on here. So there's a lot of cropping involved. So if there's going to be a lot of cropping, you want a lot of megapixels so you can crop more away and still save your picture. So yeah, that's something that I wouldn't mind seeing. I don't think it would be worth upgrading if that's all they did, you know, but 
but I think why not? Let's let's throw the forty the, the forty megapixel sensor into the camera. Now, what about the screen? So in the last iteration here, they added this little baby. All right, this is very cool, very nice. So. What could they do to change the screen? Well, obviously there's only one thing they could do, and that's to make it a full flippy screen. They could make it a full flippy screen so that it flips around to the front this way, or they could pull that thing that like Sony does where the, where the screen flips up on top, which is actually kind of cool, uh, but probably patented, and you probably, you probably can't do it. So the question then becomes, do we need a screen that flips around on this camera? I think the argument can be made that we do. Because I know that I use this camera on vacations and for family pictures and stuff like that. And I set up on a little tripod and I take a picture of my family every year at Christmas. And it would be nice to have a flippy screen on this camera. Now, there's the aesthetic problem. A lot of people just do not like the flippy screen. They just hate it. In fact, with the X-T5, they went away from the flippy screen and, and went back to a screen that just goes up and down, left and right because people didn't like it so much, and also because they wanted to differentiate it from the X-H2, which has a full flippy screen. So I guess I'm undecided. It, it, it wouldn't be a deal changer for me, but I'd be okay, you know, if they came out with a version that had a flippy screen. And that's about it. I mean, settings and controls, I don't see what else they could do. I mean, it'd be nice if they put a, another knob here, but they really can't because they would have to raise this, and I'm not sure sure that I would like that. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the way the ISO is right here. Um, and a, a, a permanent dial for that would be nice, but to be honest, if it was up to me, I would get rid of the exposure compensation wheel and make this a permanent ISO wheel because I never use this wheel anyway. I have this mapped to one of my dials. So if I want to do exposure compensation, I just do it this way. I never use this hard wheel. So if it was up to me, yeah, sure. Let's take the ISO dial, which is hidden down in here, and let's make this the ISO dial. And if you absolutely felt you had to have this, well, this is a small dial. Maybe you could put this over here. Maybe. Or, or well, now you couldn't build it there. So, yeah, maybe you can put this over here. But I, I'm curious, how many people actually use this dial? Tell me in the comments. Do you use this dial? Defend this dial in the comments, if you would. What I'd really like to see someone do is build this with a pass-through hot shoe on it. Take this and put a hot shoe on top of it that's passed through so that I could have this on the camera while I have a flash on the camera. That was probably the single biggest improvement they could make to this camera. Seriously, because I can't live without this thumb thing. I'm, I just, it, this is constant. And I've got a link. If you have not been to my gear page, go to my gear page. There's a link in the description. I've got a link to this. I've got a link to this. I've got a link to every accessory that I own on this camera. And I've been through them all and I've tried them all. And this one right here, this is like a must have. Without this, I'm, I'm just constantly afraid I'm going to drop the camera. So this is a must have. And what I don't like is when I want to put a flash on the camera, I have to take this off and stick it in my pocket or stick it in my bag. And now I've got this bit flash on my camera and my camera became harder to hold. It's even more likely I'm going to drop it when, and I've added weight to it. So yeah, some company, get on this. Make this with a pass-through for the hot shoe so that you can put a flash right on top. I really, really love to see that. So that's about it, really. I, I, there's, there's, uh, Fuji's going to have a hard time. I honestly don't see them coming out with a new version of this camera for two years more. I, I think it'll be four or five years before we see a new version of the Fuji X100V because they simply can't really improve it anymore. And right now, it's selling like gangbusters. They can't, they can't produce them fast enough. They stop taking orders for them. So why? Why would you come out with a new version? I was talking to a guy the other day. I was having my car worked on. Uh, and he said that he had a, uh, was it a Pathfinder or a to the Toyota? What's the top of the line? The RAV, not the RAV4, the you know what I'm talking about, the top of the line Toyota. And uh, he said he finally got a new, he finally changed to a new, a new uh, car brand because they hadn't updated it for 10 years. And I said, yeah, because it was selling so good, there was no reason to update it. You know, you don't, you don't come out with a new version of a camera if it's selling faster than you can make it. So they're not going to make a new version of this camera anytime soon. That's my prediction. But if they were going to make a new version, in order for me to upgrade, I would like to see a 40 megapixel sensor. I would like to see a wider lens. 
maybe a flip around screen, and maybe a change in the controls. Other than that, I mean, that's what it would take for me to upgrade. Oh, my kid, I'm going to upgrade. <laughs> no matter what they do to it, I'm going to upgrade. But would it be worth the upgrade? Yeah, probably not, unless they did something major like change the LCD screen or change uh, the lens width or, or something like that. All right, so hop down in the cabinets and uh, give, me the, give me the news. Tell me what you would change or what you would keep or tell me that I'm crazy or that you agree with me. I don't care. We, we love to talk in the comments. And listen, give me a like and give me a subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to grow this channel and I, I can't tell you um, how much enjoyment I get out of the community that I have on YouTube. I have so many oars in the water. I have my podcast and I speak nationally around the country and, 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 and speak all over the place. And, and I have this channel and I have my group on Facebook and, and there's so many photographers that I know, but I really enjoy this YouTube channel. I really do. I enjoy the back and forth. Everyone seems to always be so respectful and so nice and, and they love the camera so much and they love to talk photography. So, so stay involved if you can. The best way to do that is to subscribe and then go into your, com go into your uh, YouTube thing there and set it up so that you get notifications anytime I put up a new video and you can come back and join in on the conversation. All right, that's it for now. I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.